Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. So checking in on the market. So today was a day where news ran the show. We had the S&P 500 break the low of yesterday right before the call transcript from Trump was released. It was then released and the market went up. So I don't care what your opinion is about the call transcript. I don't care what my opinion is about the call transcript. What I care about is what does the market think about the call transcript. Yesterday, the market dumped because the odds of an impeachment of President Trump increased significantly. Today, we saw the details of the call log and the market said the odds of impeaching the president have now gone down. We overcompensated yesterday. New information came out to the market. The market adjusted accordingly. The market is all about probabilities. It focused on the impeachment yesterday. So that was the probability being readjusted today as less likely. This was the kind of move that got some shorts in trouble, in my opinion, because it moved straight off of the low of the day and it didn't give the bulls, it didn't give the bears any chance to cover. Normally, I would expect that if we're going to see a significant move, we need an hourly higher low and higher high to change the hourly trend and see bounce follow through. This move just slowly faded all day and didn't allow for any bears to get out on any consolidation. So it'll be interesting to see where we open tomorrow because I would imagine that if we do see a gap up open, that there will be a lot of shorts that are in some pain from that. If we do not, we have to change the hourly trend. So bulls need a higher low, and then we have to break the high of today tomorrow to confirm the hourly trend change and see follow through. So now that the bulls are responding like this, again, as I said, volume, we have to see bear follow through and bear volume if we have any chance of breaking the August lows. Granted, one day isn't gonna mean a whole lot, just like the one bear day yesterday doesn't mean a whole lot now in hindsight, now that we have a big green day, but we have to see bears prove it to us. Otherwise, we're just looking for a weekly higher low to form. And right now there's the potential of a lot of weekly cup and handle patterns out there. And looking at SPX, all time high, low of the pullback, there's your cup, inability to break resistance, healthy bull flag consolidation, and then a breakout to all time highs. That's what the bulls are hoping for. And the same setup is on IWM, it's on QQQ. So we have to see bullish end of this week and some bulls show up next week, but there is a possibility of a weekly bull flag forming with a cup and handle pattern. Burden of proof remains on the bears. Burden of proof on the hourly is on the bulls to change the hourly trends. Burden of proof on the weekly is for the bears to break the weekly uptrend. IWM, so again, same story. Straight off the low of the day to the high of the day, we need an hourly trend change into tomorrow, the weekly time frame. Not as clear a cup and handle. The size of the pullback is a little bit more than I would like to see, but we'll be looking for it to respond accordingly based on what we see the S&P 500 do. QQQ, same thing. Hourly time frame is extended. We need an hourly trend change into tomorrow. Weekly time frame is a potential cup and handle pattern. And we have to see an hourly trend change and bull follow through. XLF, daily inside bar. Bulls obviously want to break that bullish hourly time frame. Didn't change the trend. We need the hourly trend change into tomorrow. You can see everybody's correlated. And when you see spikes in volatility like we had yesterday, that's when correlations between sectors and market participants really uh, sync up. And we're certainly seeing that. If the financial sector can get over 2827 resistance, that's going to be a big plus in favor of those charts that we just looked at, potentially seeing weekly continuation. XLV, very weak, no sign of the bulls, lower high, lower low. Looking at it on the weekly time frame, we're looking for a weekly higher low compared to 8819, but it's very notable that the healthcare sector had a very weak day. It's the third largest holding in the S&P 500. So for the S&P 500 to see that much strength while one of its major holdings was weak, also stands out. XBI, weak as well. 
all about 77.87 as the bulls are trying to form a weekly higher low. So both the healthcare and the biotech sector weak today, while it was the financial sector and the tech sector strong. The VIX had a spike first thing this morning, but gave it all back and closed near the low of the day. So we're going to be looking down at 14.30 and 13.30, and the bulls are going to want to recover and get over 18.50 to see further follow through. So Bear Miners had a big day today and gold really responding negatively to the potential odds of presidential impeachment going down and gold dumped and that led to the Bear Miners having a good day. And it was just the inverse correlation with the market that we've been seeing between precious metals and the market going inverse, which means miners and the market going inverse. So as soon as we hit the low of the day and then the S&P 500 bounced all day, that means the Bear Miners went up the majority of the day. Why were we looking at the bear miners in recent videos? I think I pointed it out yesterday. It was because the odds. What are the odds that we're going to drop this much distance, this percentage of a drop, 35% straight to a lower low versus the more likely scenario of a tightening range forming? So that's what we're going to be looking for. And we found a low at this point, 618. So low, high, higher low, and we're scouting a lower high somewhere in the low to mid $7 range. So gold, big turnaround day, big dump day, giving back the two, two and a half green days, almost three full green days given back in one day. Our hourly oversold bounce trying to play out. We have a double bottom. The hourly oversold bounce hasn't even started. The RSI is still down at 20. It's really beat up even when it does bounce. We're just gonna be looking for an hourly lower high to form. But it's all about the weekly chart because we now have a high, low, lower high. And if we drop down and break 1483 support, we are then in a weekly downtrend, which means zoom out to the monthly. And we would look for a monthly higher low to form if we lose the weekly uptrend. So that is the key support level that bulls are going to try and maintain for the next few days. And if we do hold that level, we'll be watching the tightening range on the daily time frame. High, base of support, lower high, bulls need to hold 1483. Silver's the same thing on the weekly, lower high, and we're watching 1738 for the bulls to try and hold the weekly higher lows. Daily time frame, all about 1738 and 1749 supports. And there's a potential playoff of these support levels. If we start tomorrow with some weakness in the metals, we'll be watching for the potential of a playoff those levels. And if we look at NUGT now, we've got the high of the bull move. The low of the pullback, which lost the weekly uptrend for the miners, lower high, and we'll see if the miners can give us a higher low compared to 28.11. Oil inventory report today. Bulls bought the dip, but have we changed the four-hour trend? Answer is no. Anything under 57.01 is a lower high. We've been seeing four-hour lower highs for days at this point. That has to change for momentum to shift. So 57.01 is important. If we reject from 57.01, the bulls will have to pull off a little inverse head and shoulders pattern with a higher low and then a bull break over those resistance levels. I wouldn't be surprised to see a daily tightening range form between our low, the high of the Iran news. Let's get the magnet going. So low, high of the Iran news, and we're scouting a higher low to form. And then we would look for a lower high. The bottom line, if you've been watching my videos is look for tightening ranges after spikes in volatility. And we see it all the time pulling up Bitcoin right now. Bitcoin dumped huge. This will just be relevant real quick. So weekly tightening range. Here's our volatility for the bulls. Here's our weekly tightening range for months. There's our weekly bear break. So another spike in volatility, new price discovery. What do we get after that? An hourly equilibrium playing out for almost 12 hours. After volatility, scout for tightening ranges, play within the tightening ranges while the percentage difference between the highs and the lows are worthwhile enough to scalp some trades out of it. Otherwise, wait for the breaks of the tightening ranges and play those spikes in volatility. You could have sat and made no trades in cryptocurrency for the last two months and waited for that bear break and you could have made a uh, quick and easy oh, 5 to 10% in one day. Natural gas. And speaking of which, you might say 5 or 10% in one day, big whoop. But if you make 10% in a year, you're beating the S&P 500 or you're at the S&P 500 level as far as average returns. So if you sit on your hands for a month and then make a 10% trade, 
Don't look down on that. That is absolutely worthwhile. Natural gas. Weekly higher low trying to form. We're watching to see, can the bulls hold the back test of the exponential moving average support? Daily is seeing a bullish reversal candlestick. Oversold bounce this morning. Hourly higher low is 2488. Have to break 2516 to change the hourly trend. Bulls are on their way to test that level. Four hour RSI was oversold. What happened the last time we were oversold? We bounced. So historically, since the bull break took place, four hour RSI at 30 has seen some bounces. And here's another one now. So we're watching to see, can this weekly pattern remain healthy to favor continuation? Because if we drop down any lower, it's gonna begin favoring a tightening equilibrium. That's all I got. I'm gonna be traveling for the next week, so videos will be more sparse, less on time. But I'll check in as I can. Best of luck out there. Have a good rest of your day, and we'll see you soon. On you.